I think this is supposed to look like a Game Boy Advance, right? Hi and welcome to another episode of Cheesy Bites. Today we're looking at another Mikit board, the MK72. Now, don't be worried, these aren't all going to be videos about Mikit keyboards, although this isn't the last one either, as they did send me a couple of their current lineup. But know that this isn't a sponsored video, they didn't pay me for it. In fact, nobody ever paid for a video ever on this channel, but often, not always, I do get to keep the boards, and for some, there are affiliate links and discount codes, but neither of those will ever influence anything I have to say. But Enough of that, you're here because of this, so let's talk about it. When I first saw this on their website, it didn't really catch my eye, even though it's promoted most prominently, which makes me think that this is their flagship product, but after trying it out, I don't think it's their best, at least not from the ones I've tried so far. It does have a lot of options though. Beginning with the fact that this time around, we have a hot swap PCB and surprisingly, you can get it without any switches or keycaps at all. Basically, you can just buy the base itself, which I believe is a first when it comes to a pre-build, but pre-build it is not because it actually shipped in two separate boxes or it came in two separate boxes along with a jar of switches. So you have to put everything together by yourself. This is an interesting concept and opens up the question whether or not this could be a great starting board, one that can be purchased with all the required parts so that you don't have to go out and hunt them by yourself, but still get the joy of putting a board together by yourself. But there's a glaring issue with that, and that's the price. At $99 without the caps and switches, although it has to be said that the keycaps are free regardless of the options you choose, it is simply too expensive to be considered a starting board. So what does it have going for it then? Well, for one, it has a very unique design and layout, starting with the HHKB-like configuration that is having the control key where the uh, cap stock would normally go and omitting the arrow keys. But where it diverts is with its additional function row, creating this symmetrical rounded cluster of keys. And I gotta admit, it looks kinda cool. Speaking of functions, I won't be diving into any of those as per feedback on the last Cheesy Bytes video. So if you want to learn more about them, there is a comprehensive and easy to understand manual included that will give you all the information that you need. But just so that I mentioned it, it is wireless and it has the usual assortment of Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz modes. You can switch between Windows and Mac, along with a whole bunch of RGB settings. Actually, let's just very briefly talk about the RGB. I normally try to get through this portion as fast as possible because I couldn't care less about it, but here I have to show it off because this board lights up like a Christmas tree. So just give me a second as I turn down the studio lights. All right, and behold. This is quite something, and even I have to admit that it kind of looks cool. I couldn't run with this on a daily basis, but I'm sure there's plenty of people who are looking for something like this, which made me wonder why they don't show this off more often. On every screenshot I see, it looks incredibly minimal, subdued, but behind this lies, well, this. As you probably already guessed, it's entirely made of plastic. It does have a solid feel though, it's not flimsy, pretty firm actually, but if you're coming from a custom board, you're gonna notice the weight or lack thereof. The keycaps on the other hand are standard, but they're nothing to write home about. They look pretty nice as they are using a double shot PBT construction. But if you were looking for you know, black on white keycaps, these aren't going to be the ones that are gonna turn any hats. For example, if I was to buy a black on white set, I wouldn't buy this one, even if this was sold separately. But considering that you get these for free, but let's be honest, they're not really free, it's good enough, I would say. They're decent caps, better than on most pre-builds, I think, considering the double shot PPT construction. On the back, we get a few things to cover. One is the magnetic grove to hold the wireless dongle. And remember, dongle always beats Bluetooth when it comes to latency. Secondly, there are no adjustable feet, just these four rubber pieces to hold it in place. We also got a wired and wireless switch and four hex screws, which I appreciate, and a single USB connector at the top, which is for the wired connection or to charge the board. If you flip it back around, you might notice an unusually shallow chin, but don't let the design fool you. Although it is slimmer at around 17.2 millimeters, it's not that much more than the one on the M65, for example, which measured around 17.75 millimeter. So this is smaller, but it's not gonna make that much of a difference. All right, let's finish up the outside by talking about the design just a little bit 
more. As mentioned in the intro, this is inspired by the Game Boy Advance, or so I think. I don't remember exactly if the rep told me this or if I read it somewhere. Whatever the case may be, I do think the resemblance is there if you look for it. Like the indents at the top here mimicking the shoulder buttons on the original GBA, or the slanted LED strips which kind of look like the speaker grill just on the other side. Although I have to say that I wish they would have put the LED indicators at the top right, you know, just like on the original. In general, I think they should have leaned more into it. For example, by having a purple color scheme, just like the original GBA, or go even further and add actual gamepad controls. You know, like the GameCube keyboard controller from years past. I always wanted one of those, but at the time could never afford it. But that would have been an amazing, well, gimmick, I guess. In the end, it's probably for the better, as it would have likely put more people off than make them want to buy it. Well, except me and maybe some of you. But as I said, looking at it from the outside, let's turn this around and open it up to see what makes it tick. As just mentioned, there are four hex screws on the back and removing them is as easy as pie. After that, the easiest way to get in is by using something really slim like this plastic guitar pick thing from iFixit. I found the best way is to uh, try to get it in on the corner and when you slide it around the case, you should see or hear the plastic clasps just loosening and disconnecting. Before taking it apart, be sure to disconnect the battery cable. The base doesn't have anything too interesting. We got the glued in battery and a piece of foam for some cushioning and a little magnet for the dongle. The top is where everything else is and this is where it starts to get a little weird. At first I thought this board was entirely made out of two pieces, bottom and top, with the plate being integrated into the ladder. But it turns out that the plate is actually a separate piece, which is attached by another eight screws. Using this construction, the board actually has a softer typing experience than I initially expected. When you push down on the board, you can actually see it give in just the tiniest little bits. But the result is a typing experience that is softer than the one found on the M65. But don't confuse this with proper bounds. It is just not as stiff. That's all. But let's move on and take the plate out of the top housing. Before you remove the plate and the PCB out of the top housing, once again, be sure to remove the tiny little ribbon cable that connects to the LED indicators. Once you've done that, you can just pull it out and here we go. The plate and obviously still the keycaps and switches. I probably should have removed this beforehand. All right, if you want to get in even deeper, there's an additional nine screws we have to remove to separate the PCB from the plate. All right, we're finally presented with the most intimate parts, the PCB and the surprising layer of silicone. I'm not sure if I've seen this before. It could very well be that my mind has forgotten about this, but it seems to be a combination of plate and PCB foam together, or silicone in this case. Kind of cool, kind of weird too, and something that could be removed if you want to tinker around with the sound, for example. At this stage, we also get a clear view of the stabilizers and rejoice, they're standard screw-ins. I even tried out some Duroc V2s and they seem to work just fine, which is great. So in case you don't like these or you just want to replace them with different ones, you can actually do so, which is really not the case with most pre-builds. A few additional note about these stabilizers. I don't know what kind of make these are, as they don't look like anything else that I have at home or that I've seen so far. And except for the space bar, all the other stabs here are bone dry. Like there's no loop at all here, like nothing. The stabilizer did have a little bit of factory lubing, but it was still quite rattly. So if there's one thing that you should definitely take a look at when you get this board, check the stabilizers.
I think the MK72 is a very weird but interesting board. It looks minimal and understated at first, but at the flick of a switch or key combo, it turns into the life of the party. But just like the M65, I think it's too expensive for what it is, especially with the crazy competition that is going on at the moment, where everybody's trying to jam insane features and build quality into the lowest price possible. For that, the MK72 just doesn't offer anything out of this world to pull in a larger audience. The design is unique for sure, but it's not enough and the sound, well, I didn't particularly like it. There's definitely room for improvement and fixing the stabs, maybe adding some foam or even removing the silicon layer altogether might help, but there are better options out there to get started on. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, for the ongoing support and I hope you're having a good time. Go play some games and see you the next time. Bye bye.